Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Hidden Dragon. I'm excited for this, and if we could get 300 likes on this just for us being in this tournament, that would be amazing. If not, that's cool, really. I don't really mind. Uh, it just lets me know that you guys are still enjoying this series, uh, because we should have plenty more episodes to come before the full game drops. And those of you wondering when the uh, when Wimbledon, save will start, Wimbledon save will start, it will start the moment... Um, the, well, not the moment. It's probably the day after the full game is released, because obviously I need to record the first couple of episodes first. Um, but yeah, so if there's a bit of a hangover in terms of like, if I've got some extra episodes of Wales, then they will continue until they're done, basically. So you might get some double upload days uh, if things sort of can coincide at the right point, and maybe even a triple upload day on the day of the first part of the Wimbledon series. You just don't know at this point. And obviously I might bring back Wales, maybe for a stream, or maybe start streaming some of that offline save I'm going to do, which I've decided is going to be with IFK Jotobor over in Sweden. So uh, let's jump into the game against Bosnia. We don't want to take too long because this episode otherwise could drag on with these double live comms you know how it can be so um few changes today jake taylor's had to come in just because of the sheer knackeredness of some of the other players bale will play up top for us again uh, no i think he was behind the striker last time but unfortunately um bradshaw just doesn't have the doesn't have the legs in him and that's a problem basically so we're gonna jump straight in and get this game going now italy did beat bosnia by a goal to nil which isn't a hugely impressive result to be honest and it makes me wonder if bosnia are stronger than i thought they are uh, which could cause us some problems in this game if we don't sort ourselves out but if we were to win this one i think we'd be in a good position the issue we've got is ed and jeko now remember we played bosnia um in the nations league twice and we actually oh damn it guys we actually won oh he's offside thank god for that um we actually won away um in i can't remember the capital of bosnia is so that's apolo uh, apologies bosnians i don't remember what the capital of bosnia and herzegovina is um it's no I apologies I really cannot remember off the top of my head uh, which is a bit of a faux pas on my part but you know um so we did win there but then we did lose of course at home Jekyll was miles offside but again the goalkeeper didn't really seem to react as quick as I would have liked um a win here is kind of key otherwise it could come down to well actually no a win is massively important because if we don't win I don't think there's any chance of that third spot actually getting us through even if we were to get third oh dear me oh, oh thank god for that Vishka very nearly sneaked in at the back post there. Now, they're interestingly playing a 4-4-1-1. So we may have to try and, again, look at the Prozone stats, try and figure out if there's a way that we can get past that, if things aren't working for us, of course. They're certainly looking like they're trying to get on the front foot, though we have got a lot of possession. Walsh clears again. They definitely love the... Oh, dear. What a save from Darlo. I tell you what, that was much more like it. First real good chance of the game goes to Bosnia. Uh, they're clearly playing a bit on the counter here, and we maybe need to be a bit more careful about that. Krujic! Oh, it's ricocheting all over the place. I'm actually tempted to switch it to counter because they're playing counter. So if we match that by going on counter ourselves, they may not have much of a chance to break on us. If we get men behind the ball and sit on it, they may not have the same level of opportunity that they're getting so far because clearly a lot of their opportunities so far have come from them breaking. They've not really done anything since then. So that's interesting. We seem to be coming back into the game a little bit more. Um, oh, Sarajevo. That's the capital, isn't it? <laughs> Apologies, guys. Um, not that you would expect me to know that, but there you go. That is the capital. And most of that stuff I know just from watching Eurovision. Love that. Um, Williams into Bale, who's let that go for some reason. Pjanic all the way down for Jekyll, who's out wide and shouldn't really be able to do anything with it, but that doesn't mean he won't. Whipped it in. This should easily be mopped up by Neil Taylor. Maybe it could set us on the break. Let's play them at their own game. They've had a lot of shots, but I've actually only hit the target with one of ten. Taylor now into a good position. Allen picks it up. Back for Bale through. <gasps> he was offside anyway, but... Um, well, it certainly looked like it with the way that the official was moving, but actually, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. Nil-nil so far. They've had a few good chances, but we seem to have come back into the game now. Um, now that we've switched to counter, but I am going to quickly take a little look at the Prozone stats so we can see if we can figure out anything else that we can do with them. So what have they been doing well so far? So key passes for Krunic, important. They're getting a lot of headers won by Jekko, which is interesting. So, hmm... Maybe even standing off of Jekko. He's winning so many headers and perhaps we just cannot do that. So maybe what I might do is if we have got him targeted, maybe just back off a little bit. They're not stupidly narrow. They're actually spreading up quite wide at the back here. So playing it short quite a bit in that kind of area. I'm not really sure we can exploit the flanks against them. But we might be able to exploit the middle because that generally works against 4-4-2. So maybe it will work against 4-4-1-1. Uh, the other thing I wanted to change is... Let me just set that up like that. And we'll go back into the game now for the second half. And then I'm also going to try and target um, a couple of players. But first we're going to target Jekko, or, or untarget him rather. Uh, frankly, he's already been... If we try to mark him, maybe he won't win so many headers. And we'll just show him to his weaker foot while we're there. And of course, uh, also, I want to get... Cr uh, yeah, close down Krunic. Get some bigger tackles on him. Hopefully that remembers... 
Yeah, it does. Okay, that's good. Hopefully, if we can tie to Mark Jekko, that means that, in theory, he may not be able to win as many headers because he's had a really good success rate with that so far. And if we can kind of cut that out, that might be a bit more useful for us. And also, closing down Krunic might just stop them from having so many outlets uh, with their passes. Williams. Uh, not Williams. Wilson. So many Williams, I just assumed it was one. Wilson now. If we go through the middle, we've got a lot of players central. Bail through. Bail strike. Bail miss. And he's offside anyway, I think. Uh, no. Okay. The official wasn't moving. I just assumed he was offside. Wilson's ball in. It's cleared away. But again, we've got players there. Ramsey is one of them. Blocked, though. Uh-oh. Jekko could bring this away now for Bosnia. He's a good player, Jekko. And he's the real danger man. Oh, brilliant defending there from Ramsey. Up to Bale. Having Bale up top as well does give us a little bit more of a dimension to our play because we can break in with the utmost pace. But a nil-nil draw would not be good enough today. <laughs> I for a second thought he was about to do a Charlie Adam there. That would have been embarrassing. Um... This game is so finely poised. It feels like there's going to be one goal in this. And if we get it, then that's brilliant. If we don't, then we're going to be screwed. Williams, please pull this back for someone. Damn it. We're getting into some decent positions. We're getting a decent number of shots on target. We've really pulled this game back since we switched to counter against them. Um, they clearly don't like the fact that we're now letting them have the ball because they don't know what to do with it. Williams is down there. Ball across. Bail. Penalty? Oh, okay. I don't think... I, it's hard to tell from up here, but it didn't look like Bow. Bow? Bale was fouled. I'm just trying to be balanced about this, but here we are. We have a chance here. Big opportunity. If Bale can score the penalty, we will take the lead in a game that might, I feel, only be separated by one goal. Bale steps up, and he slides that home with consummate ease. And it seems that Italy and Holland actually drew their other game, which is interesting, uh, which means there is actually still a chance. If we were to somehow beat Italy, then you never know. There might well be something in this game for us. Um, Bale, look at that for calm. Bosnia nil, Wales 1. Gareth Bale with his third goal of the tournament already. And that's something I do like to see. He's really taken to this like a duck to water. Right, changes are needed though, because Ramsey and Allen are both absolutely fucked. Ramsey's not had the best game either. So we're going to get Johnny Williams on. And frankly, Gareth Bale is knackered too. But I think this is the game that we really need them in. But I am going to make a second change and get Jordan Williams off and get Ashley Richards on because he's such a lethal weapon down that right-hand side. Um, now then. Have they changed anything? Nothing is coming to mind. We've had more shots on target. Equal. It's pretty equal. Uh oh. Lulic is balling. Williams will clear it. And Taylor might not be able to gap to that. No, he won't. Um, but hey, we're still doing okay. I'm pleased with the form that we're displaying in this game so far. We're looking fairly even. If they were to equalise, I don't think we could complain too much. Lulic. Oh, he's missed it. Just barely. Um, was that really that clear cut though? Neither team, frankly, is doing a lot regarding the old uh, actually hitting the target with their shots, which is surprising. Um... I know Joe Allen is getting absolutely knackered, and we may have to bring him off. Right, we'll bring him off now, um, because he is so knackered. But, unfortunately, stamina just seems to affect players way more than it did last year. It might just be because we're in, like, the off-season, technically. But still, I don't think it should really affect players as much as that. That was really bad. We've got ten minutes to hang on. Can we do it? Can we hang on for what could be the, ma the most important win? Come on, somebody put tackling on Jekko. I do have him set to close down, and to be marked tighter, so I don't know why they were standing off of him there. Um... God, that front line is absolutely knackered. But we may just have to sit. I think if we can just survive these last few minutes, we've got three minutes. Come on, guys. Let's do this. They've, they seem to be shooting from range now, which means they seem to have knocked them off their pan. They've got a really strange system lining up here. I think, guys, we may well have done it. Uh, there was going to be one goal in the game, and it has actually turned out that it's going to be a penalty, it would seem, unless they're going to get a very, very late equaliser. But a win here against them, even though it's only 1-0, would be so important, because I think winning a game is going to be enough potentially to get us through there we go i think we do need to address things my love there we go um through the next round or hopefully if we can do that we'll just take a little look at the other groups briefly before we zip uh, zip to the next stage let's just take a look at all the groups so so far there's a few of them have only played one game in fact we're the only group that have actually played more than one game so it's difficult to tell so i will join you guys in a sec for the start of the final game against italy and we'll sort of see where we land after that see you guys in a sec right guys we are back and it is the day of the game against italy now i worked it out of course there's six groups and the four best runner-ups from four of the groups get to go through so the win is important because some of the other groups there's teams with only one or two points in those positions so i still feel that we may have done enough just by getting a win basically but we'll have to see you never know what we can do against italy i've automatically shoved it on exploiting the flanks as well as um looking for the overlap because they're playing a back three and there's gonna be space if we can get it and we're gonna switch to counter of course like i always do and we're just gonna jump straight into the game because why the hell not um so i think holland holland actually drew with bosnia um, which is interesting. So there is actually an opportunity for... Well, I mean, if we were to win, we would win the group. Oh, no, sorry. Now they're winning. And they're both being played at the same time. Of course they are. Um, so 
Yeah. I mean, of course, if we beat Italy, then we go, we will go through anyway in second place. But I still feel that a draw would be definitely enough. I think if we got a draw against Italy, we would absolutely go through as a third place team. There's going to be no doubt about it. There's nobody's going to get more than four points uh, and come third. I don't even think that's possible. Um, or is it? I don't actually know. It might well be uh, possible to get six, but I don't think anyone actually is going to. So... I feel like if we get a draw against this elite, we'll be fine. Even if we lose, we'll probably still be fine. I don't know if it works on goal difference. So if we could avoid conceding too many, that would be ideal. Oh, oh wait. I just thought it had gone in. <laughs> I just assumed it had gone in the back of the net. Verratti now with the corner for Italy. Cleared away. We've got a knackered team out there in some respects, but unfortunately, we've not a lot we can really do about that. We need to make sure we've got our best foot forward for this game because these games are the most... Oh, damn it. Goes through the goalkeeper again. Berardi gives Italy the lead after just a few minutes, but I still think that three points could well be enough for us. I don't know if there's a way that we can look at the other games going on, because obviously they're not going on at the same time. Uh, there is some other games going on, but not in our group. Of, well, there is, but you know what I mean. Um, it's not like the last day of the season where all the matches take place at the same time. Cranvita was able to give way too much time on the ball. Gabby Adini back to Berardi, and, well, actually, it's more to the near post than going through the goalkeeper. Berardi gives Italy the lead. They are obviously number one, and they actually won the previous European Championship. I know someone asked me in the comments a little while ago if I could show the draw for the World Cup when we weren't in it, but no, as far as I know, I can't, because it wouldn't. It doesn't appear as a news item if you're not in the Cup. Um, I suppose I could have actually taken a look at it when it was started, but I didn't realise it had, basically. I was just trying to get to the next game, because it literally that episode took a, a year of game time to actually process. Gabby Adini's through, and that must be offside, No. Are we 2-0 down after seven minutes? No, we're not. Okay, good. He's offside. Ah, uh, dear. Um, right. Oh, we're going to see a replay as well, but he looked miles offside to me. Or maybe it was just... No, he's definitely offside. Um, <laughs> let's just skip that now. We don't need to see another highlight of that. Right. So, is there still chance for us in this game? Taylor whipped it in, cleared away. Back to Taylor. He's in the box now. Maybe he can slip it through. Bale's in space and Bale has done it again. Four goals in three matches in the Euros for Gareth Bale. If we do go through, he has had a ridiculous... This is probably going to be one of his last potentially major tournaments for us. I think, you know, he'll be able to get to the next World Cup because he'll be 32. But I do wonder about how much longer after that he's going to have. And this could be probably one of the best tournaments he's ever had. Um, it's great to see him there and scoring four goals uh, already. So yeah, okay, we've only had one shot and we have put it in the back of the net, but we're playing counter-attacking football. That's what you've got to expect. Bale, huge space for Neil Taylor again. This is what I like. Darmian gets straight in there though, and this could be where we get caught out. Because we're playing such a high line. Um, oh, what the fuck? Straight over the defender's head though. Tellez, great tackle from Richards. Um, we are playing quite a high line, but we do that anyway, just because that seems to be what works best with this tactic in order to get those players into scoring positions. Um, the issue I think is that when we do, because we're looking for the overlap, it means our fullbacks could get caught up the field a bit too much perhaps sometimes. And that's a worry for me, but I don't know. I still feel that we've got a chance to score goals with this system. So we may as well keep going with it. Oh, God's sake. Um, we're going to end up being the death of ourselves here. And they've scored. He's offside again, isn't he? <laughs> Gabby Adini has been good, but he's been offside already twice. They should have had three goals by now, but he just couldn't stay onside. Um, this tactic is going to either work really well or work really badly, basically. It's, oh, it's so tight. In the sense that we could easily get a few goals because we're looking really good up front. But unfortunately, when we do lose the ball, we do look vulnerable at the back. And that's a problem for us. But we do look good on the break. Verratti's ball in. Cleared away. Bale could bring this down and get this clear. Up to Bradshaw, who's got a little bit of pace about him. And Wales have so many players surging forward. Look at this. We've got three on one. Why would you not pass it? Oh, George Williams, that was the chance. Wales could have taken the lead there. Richards' is ball in. Cleared away. Back to Bale. He's got to get that back out. Oh, should have... There we go. Back to Richards. He's got a bit of space. Can he get a ball in, though? Does. Cleared away again. But first to the ball is Taylor. Richards can have another crack at the whip. And does get that ball in. Bradshaw's header cleared away. Comes back for Allen this time. This is nice football from White. Oh, that's so bad. Um, this has been a decent first half performance for us. We're a one all with Italy. We're holding our own, just like we did against Holland. Um, still have a feeling that they'll probably end up winning in the end, but we're doing a decent job of it so far. We're sort of having to sort of play on the very uh, the sort of very limit of our ability at the moment, and I think that's kind of the problem. Um, is that you know everything we're doing in this game is coming from the most outrageously OP performances at times. Um, but hey, if there was any game we were going to step up and do this, today's the day we needed it. Great tackle there. Ramsey can surely clear this. Goes back for Ward instead. Lumped into the midfield and Bale nearly got to that. Unfortunately, he may have to come off later because he is absolutely knackered. And there isn't a huge gap between um, this and if we were to go through the next round, which... We oh, Berardi. Oh, Berardi. What? Oh, God. Such a good opportunity there. Great save from Ward, who I've just noticed is actually in instead of um, Darlow. And that's poor. Um, 
very lucky that this deflected shot actually fell straight on his head and he actually managed to get it in the net from there. Uh, to be fair, it wasn't particularly powerful um, header needed, really. It's a shame because we are now behind again and I don't know, it's not exactly undeserved from Italy. They've done well. But I still don't think we're done in this game yet. Kranvitter's on a yellow, so maybe we can get him sent off or something. But unfortunately, I think we're going to get caught on the break whilst playing on the break. And Gaviadini is offside again, isn't he? No. Oh, sorry. The assistant wasn't moving. So I just assumed he was offside. Um, okay. Usually when they don't move, that's because they, they're offside. I mean, he isn't offside, I don't think. But it's strange that the assistant didn't do what he usually does. Um, damn it. Right, now we're 3-1 down. We're going to have to really sort of pull our fingers out here. Maybe we'll go on a control a bit. We don't have much choice in the matter. We were doing so well in this game. Um, let's see. Doing so well. Yep. Let's try and push forward a little bit. I still don't think that it's the end of the world if we were to lose this game, but the, the less goals we can lose this one by, the better, really. Uh, do opposition team talk. Right. Look at the summary. Who's doing well for Italy? Um, nobody's really done anything. Like, no one's being singled out as being an amazing key pass. Let's have a look at their heat map and see if there's anything we can see. Wow. They are playing so much in the middle of the park. But we're already on exploit the flanks. Uh, is there anything we can do defensively to maybe mix that up a little bit? Maybe just use tighter marking, close them down a bit more. We're already on closing down more, much more perhaps, just hassle them a bit more. The thing is, that's going to cause us a lot more um, tiredness, which we might just have to exhaust here just in the hope of maybe nicking a... Well, it would be a ridiculous comeback if we were to come back from here because, frankly, they're Italy. They are the number one in the world. And in all honesty, we've not been stupidly bad compared to them. Uh, Gaviadini Walsh does well again. You know, they are, bear in mind, the best team in the world right now. And it's not like against France or Germany like last time where we were getting bumped thumped for 4-0. Yeah, we conceded four goals against Holland, but it was much better from us in general. Please don't get sent off, Joe. We do not need that right now. It's yellow. Thank God for that. Um, now, as long as he doesn't get a second one, we'll be okay. I don't know. We're not offering anything. It's difficult to break Italy down. They obviously are a very, very good side, as you can imagine. Ball over the top. Gabbiadini and Marchisio will bring this down now in the middle for the Ferrati. They're now stretching the flanks quite a lot themselves. Tellez. Back from Marchisio. I'm wondering if we can play even wider. Might just cut off some of those passing channels. Obviously, it'll open up more down the middle, but they're a very wide team. Gabbiadini, and once again, he's missed it. Um... He could have had a bloody hat full today if he'd just actually stayed on side a bit more and hit the target a bit more. They're really starting to turn the screw on us a little now, which is a shame, but we've got to... I don't know. The question is, shutting up shop is not easy, even against a team like Italy. It's it's all very well us saying, right, we're going to try and just, instead of going for it, just try and stop them from scoring. Not that easy to do, as Berardi has just pointed out. Um, they're a very good team, people. And I'm just thinking that maybe the best approach right now is not defending, it's attacking and just trying to get a couple of goals on them. Um, maybe pull it back a little bit like we did. Well, not like we did against Holland. That was a much more even game. Um, a bit questionable on the goalkeeper's positioning on that one. But hey, what can you do? Let's see. Um, God damn it. Still got 40 minutes left in this one and it could get very dicey. I'm going to make a change as well to sort of conserve some energy for the next leg if we need it. Uh, Tom Lawrence can play in there very nicely. Harry Wilson will come off as well for David Cotterell and I'm actually going to make a triple sub as well and get Johnny Williams off for Ramsey just to get some fresh legs on at this point. Just so we've at least got some people that can run in the midfield. Unfortunately, because we've got not a lot of squad depth, um, even though we can pick the team and all that, the players that we've got as sort of backups just aren't anywhere near as good as the Bales, the Ramseys, and Albert Rady's got another one now. And we are falling apart a little bit. And I'm not entirely sure what we can do about this other than switch back to counter and just try and sit. Because in this second half, they have just demolished us. And perhaps it's because of the changes I made. I don't know. Maybe us closing down more has actually caused problems. We'll just flip that off and flip that off and flip that off and then kind of go a bit more. Just try and go back to a more bog standard type of system uh wait have i got it set to play out defense as well we'll probably turn that off as well uh while we're here just try and get some long balls forward perhaps oh and now an injury does tom bradshaw that's the problem with uh, the old well hang on not a holland are winning so i thought that was bosnia um that's not ideal but we kind of have no choice but to play on at this point hopefully that won't affect us too badly in terms of our chances of going through now obviously we won't find out uh, immediately but I'll, I'll put a bit on the end of the episode so that way you guys do know of course if we're going to be going through because if not it will be um Oh, what will it be? The next episode, if we don't go through, will be, of course, the Nations League games against Holland and Italy. And those are going to be tough. So I expect us to probably get relegated from the, the A-League. But the fact that we're in the A-League at all is amazing. Bradshaw's through and the chance was saved. I think he may have been offside. No, it wasn't. Okay. We've still created some decent opportunities against a very good Italy team. And that is a positive sign for me because I think that bodes well for us in future tournaments. If we could get a slightly easier group 
and maybe a better World Cup qualifying group than last time because that was a toughie. Uh, it was always going to be difficult, particularly with the one qualification spot that was available. Um, Holland are now three up against Bosnia, so that's uh, that's them done. Still one more chance in this game. Probably not going to be for uh, us, though, let's face it. Tellers is mm, Robin Yoli. In for Verratti. Through for Gabbiadini. He's through again and he's missed it again. Marco. Not, not Marco, is it? I don't know. Is it Marco Gabbiadini or is that an old player? Am I thinking of someone else? Um, ah, damn it. Well, there we go, guys. It's looking like 5-1 to Italy. And I'm not even sure we've been 5-1 bad. Um, we've been... Okay, but the, I think the mistake was mine on the tactical changes at the start of the second half. And I, I don't know what else we were supposed to do against Italy. They're Italy. They're the best team in the world. Uh, Berardi and Gabbiadini have just torn us apart. It's Manolo Gabbiadini, what we're talking about. Right, so let's just see if we did get through. Apologies. Uh, I'm just going to skip over a couple of things here. Uh, squat, well, it's Italy. Um, let's just see if we do actually go through. We're just going to skip over a couple of days and see if that's what happens. Um... Other games, of course, are going to be relied on in order for us to actually get that. I don't know what that... Oh, it's the sort of barriers between them, isn't it? Uh, other games, of course, in other groups. I don't know how many more days um, there are actually to play. Poland and Switzerland drawing could help us. We'll just have to see. Apologies if this episode has gone on for a little while, guys. It's difficult to do with these double live comms, unfortunately, because, you know, what else can I really do? Um, I was tempted to sort of cut down some of the stuff, but then it's really difficult to do that, frankly, with the double live comms. Right. More games, really? Jesus. Some of these teams are not going to have much of a gap. I assume the teams that play late. Um, did we go through or not? There's still more games. Okay. Um, some of you might caught a glimpse of some of the other fixtures there. Is that all of them now? Right. So, three points for Georgia and a minus three goal difference. Three points for Bulgaria. Oh, we didn't get through. Unbelievable. We managed to win a game and not get through. That's disappointing. Um... I don't know. I'm not really sure what else we could have done in that group. That was the only chance we had. Anyway, guys, that means that the next episode is going to be um, the Holland game at the end of the year, um, where we've got Italy, Holland, and then Italy, followed by a game against Holland, just in case you hadn't already had enough of Holland and Italy. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please do drop a like on it. If you could get, I don't know, just drop as many as you can. That'd be glorious. And um, if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel. That would mean the world to me. And I will join you guys in the next episode for a game against Holland. Hopefully we can start getting some of these youngsters into the team soon. Because I'm hoping that they could make the real difference for us come the next Euros and World Cup qualifying campaigns. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.